in finance, the concepts of present value, future value, and interest rates come up all the time. And so I just want to walk through some very simplified uh, explanations of what this is looking like in the kind of in the easiest sense of the interest rate and uh, kind of terms and what the investment would be. So we're looking at pretty simplified investments here, but I think it helps in thinking through what are these uh, here in present value is really it's the amount of money uh, right present value is the amount of money today given an interest rate that would be needed to produce some amount of money in the future and if that's what present value is well then future value is the exact opposite it is the it, right it's a certain amount of money in the future uh, that would that an amount today would yield given a certain interest rate so we've got a few examples here that we can use to walk through this and let's go ahead and get started with one here it says you want to finance a car after graduation and we're going to say that that's four years from now you put five thousand dollars into an investment a bond will say uh, today and that investment is going to yield an annual interest rate of six point five percent and you will sometimes see this written as i is equal to six point five percent or sometimes you'll see it is equal to r is equal to zero point zero six five or six point five percent and it's asking what is the future value of this investment in essence what are you, how much are you going to have four years from now. So if we just want to think through this in the most simplistic case, what happens in year one to your investment? Well, in year one, you have the $5,000 that you've invested here. Uh, and we can kind of put some terminology here. This $5,000, this is really the present value. This is how much money you have today. And what is the four years? This is the terms that we have. And then we know here's the interest rate that we're looking at. So what what is it here that we could be looking at? Well, we've really got our present value. We've got the amount of money that we're putting in the investment today, five thousand dollars, and then that is times the in, times the interest rate. So that's going to be one plus zero point zero six five or one point oh six five. If I go to my calculator and I take five thousand times one point zero six five, I get. 5,325. And so after the first year, this investment, because you've invested that $5,000, you now have $325 uh, that you didn't previously have. Now, what are you going to do with this? Well, because the because this investment is set up as compounding, you're going to this is basically going to reinvest. And that's what compounding interest is. Compounding and I'll write it just as an R here, compounding interest here. It means that the interest that you earn throughout the terms of the investment is re, it, it is, uh, it, right, it is kind of, it's re, it's put back into the investment itself. Uh, it's reinvested into the investment itself. So then what would year two be? Well, year two of that investment, you now have $5,325. And you're going to earn 1.065%, 1.065% on that as well. And now if we take $5,325 times 1.065, we now get $5,671 uh, and basically 13 cents. I'll round it there. And you can see kind of the relationship that we're seeing here. It's basically this amount. It's the present value times one point. It's times the interest rate, one plus the interest rate times and we do that times the number of years that we have because this has happened two times and it's year two for the third time we're going to take this amount and we're going to do the exact same thing for the first time we would take that amount and we would multiply it times 1.065 here so we can start to see that really the relationship is we've got five thousand dollars here times one point zero six five and in this case this could also be rewritten as raised to the second one point oh six five times one point oh six five and that's going to get you this exact same amount of money and so if we just look at this and we did it for the third and the fourth year we can use this to say well what would the fourth year be in the fourth year if we just write it in the same way would be five thousand dollars our original investment times one point oh six five times one point oh six five times one point oh six five in the third year times one 0.065 in the fourth year and we're just going to raise that to the fourth because that would be the 1.065 times itself four times and if we do that if I take 5,000 times 1.065 raised to the fourth I get that to work out to six thousand four hundred thirty two dollars and thirty three cents and this is equal to the right this is our future value 
given a present value, a certain amount of terms, and an interest rate that is compounding annually. And so if we want to simplify this formula here, what would we have? Well, our future value is equal to the present value of our investment, right? How much we have that day, the, the um, you could think of this as the principal as well. And then we're going to multiply that times one plus the interest rate raised to the number of years, the number of years that we have on the term. So sometimes you'll see that written as an N or as a T here. And this is really the relationship that we're working at here. So right now, uh, if you were to invest $5,000 and you wanted to have a little more money to put down on a car after graduation, uh, if you did that and you had some sort of investment that was going to return 6.5 percent per year, you would end up with just just shy of $6,500 uh, for really no other work that you had to do. You were just using, you were letting someone else use that money for productive capital, uh, for productive investments. So that's great. Let's take a look at the second one here. And let's say, uh, the second one saying we want to find the present value. So in this case, we kind of want to work backwards of $10,000 five years from today. Uh, from an account that is yielding an interest rate of 8%. And so what is this here, the five years? Well, this is our terms as well. And the interest rate here, we've got R is equal to 0 0.08. And so if this is the future value formula, what we're trying to find is the present value. We know that we're going to have $10,000 at the end of the period. We want to know how much do we have to invest in the first place, given an interest rate, to yield this $10,000. And so if I just rearrange this formula, and I solve for present value, I get present value is equal to future value divided by one plus the interest rate raised to the number of terms, the number of years there. And so if we just use that to solve out here, we kind of already know the logic of what's going on. So I want to find the present value. How much would I have to invest today, given an 8% return annually for five years to get $10,000 five years from now? Well, that would be $10,000 divided by 1.08, one, right, one plus 0 0.08 raised to the fifth power. And so if I do this, I know I'm gonna have $10,000 in the numerator. In the denominator, if I take 1.08 raised to the fifth, and I get 1.4693. If I take $10,000 divided by 1.4693, I get $6,805.83. And so what this is saying is if we put in to an account yielding 8% annually $6,805.83, we'd have $10,000 five years from now. This is also called discounting. Dis counting and it's pr right exactly what it is is what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out well how much would I have had to put in the account to begin with and so I think both of these are kind of self-evident from the way that you would solve through it we've got this uh, kind of a simplified formula here and it's just a matter of if we're trying to find the present value or the future value in these kind of simplistic cases here so let's look at this last case here and see if we can put it together it says, your business is considering an investment project that will cost $20 million. So this is the present value, right? The present value would be $20 million this year. And we, and you are expecting, your business is expecting that that investment that you're making, maybe you're going to enter a new uh, market or you're going to uh, build a new factory that's going to uh, kind of expand your production capabilities, that it should yield you re a return of $30 million in three years. And here's our terms here, in three years. Should you proceed with the project if the interest rate is 9%, if R is equal to 0 0.09? And I should have said, I kind of set it up here, the annual interest rate. In all of these cases, the interest rate is the annual interest rate, and we're just looking at the term as years. You could do this quarterly uh, or in a, in a monthly in a number of different ways as well. So what is it that we're trying to find? Well, we are trying to find what would be the present so there's kind of a number of ways that you could solve this, but I think the easiest way to solve this is what would be the present value of this amount 
And if we can find that, what so let's say what would be the present value of this amount? And if we can find that and compare it to 20 million, if it is more than 20 million, then you are going to make a bigger return than the interest rate itself. And so you should go ahead and invest that $20 million if you do think you will get $30 million out of that because you will be better off as a business. So let's go and solve that and we have present value. And the present value of this return of $30 million, and I'll just keep this in simplistic uh, terms here, 30 million. And what is it? We've got the terms and the interest rate, so it's gonna be one, uh, and I'll just write this out, 1.09% raised to the three to the third power, so 1.09 times 1.09 times 1.09. And if I take 30 divided by 1.09 raised to the third power, I get 25, I get 25.9, basically 25.9 million dollars. And so in essence what this is saying is, you would have to have 25.9 million dollars given an interest rate of 9% to net 30 million dollars three years from now. What you think you're going to do is put in $20 million and get $30 million now. And so you should definitely make that investment. And here we would say yes, right? We would want to go further with that investment if if all the analysis that we did that uh, that kind of makes us think that this rate of return will actually be $30 million is correct. These are the type of decisions that businesses face all the time when they're deciding if they want to invest in, um, if they want to invest in capital improvements or to enter new markets. You have to have some sort of assumption about what is going to happen at a future date. And this discounting occurs all the time as a way of deciding, okay, should we invest in this or should we hold off and wait for some more ideas or do a little more analysis to lower our risk. And that kind of brings up risk and time horizon here, which you can obviously tell all of this would change, and I, I would encourage you to go through what would change here if you moved this from 6.5% to 8%, for example, or if you changed any of these interest rates. You can see how these formulas change when that interest rate changes, how sensitive they are, or uh, kind of how much money you would have to invest if this interest rate changes, who is better off in those cases. So I'd encourage you to kind of go through that, mess with it a little bit, but here's the basics and the basic formulas here for working through present value, future value, and understanding the role of interest rates um, in these cases in uh, kind of throughout finance.